I've got a listener or two that are thinking to themselves, I edit my own and sometimes I have horns going off, you know, alarms going off, dogs, cats, doors, somebody hits their mic and it starts shaking and rattling. Um, but I, I'm speaking for the listener's behalf. I don't know how to edit that. I might not need somebody to edit every single thing. But on every now and again, I've got an I've got a an episode where there's a problem, and I just don't have the experience to figure it out. Could they just reach out to you and just send you one thing and say, "Hey, at the twenty minute mark, uh, my dog starts barking. Can you help me get rid of this?" Do you do that? Yeah. So the thing that I do have to say about all of this is, it's not guaranteed that those sounds are going to be completely eliminated, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, there are times where cell phones go off and I can easily take the cell phone out and you would never know because cell phones are very frequency specific. So if I have a cell phone ring and I look at it in the spectral view, it's only, you know, let's just Nobody's say- voice is that high. Well, it's got less to do with, 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 with where the frequency is at Okay. And more to do with how many frequencies are involved. So, can, you know, oh, like, okay. good like example is our voice covers a wide range of frequencies. When I dump it into RX and I look at the spectral view, picture, picture a, a piano. When you're playing a piano and you have chords, if I'm going to play a C major chord, that's at minimum three or four notes. Our voice is like that. Our voice isn't just one frequency. It's multiple frequencies. It's broadband. So is a dog barking. So it's harder to remove broadband noise than just a single frequency. Okay. So I can I can usually attenuate it. Attenuate it means make it quieter. Sometimes I can remove it. Um, but if if I'm speaking and while I'm speaking, the dog is barking on top of you know like we're, we're we're doing it together that's difficult if the dog is barking in between a word then yeah i can easily eliminate that and you would never know that that dog was there so it's all case dependent really one thing i do want to mention uh because you have this wide range of tools now um that's going to add a lot of time to editing and mixing episodes because now you're really going in there and you're really addressing each and every problem. So just be aware that, I mean, this is, this is, it's great that you're going to be able to clean audio and produce a better show, but you know, the, the kind of drawback is you're going to add a lot more time that it takes you to edit and mix shows. So you have to be aware of that. And, you know, your rate is going to reflect that because look, I can, I can do more. I can, I can provide more value than, you know, just someone that is just matching levels and using compression. So your rate's going to reflect that too. So another good thing is, you know, Hey, for the people out there that do mix and edit for a living and, you know, maybe their rates have kind of plateaued. And they're looking for something where they can make more money, you know, this is this is something to look into. I mean, I hope everyone at least just looks into this. I'm I'm not advocating that everyone go out and do this because some shows don't require it, right? I mean, there are some shows that you're gonna listen to when you're commuting and you don't care about the quality. You just want to hear some guy that you follow on Twitter talk about whatever topic, and it's like, I don't care. Okay. But for those shows that do require it. For those jobs that you can't get because they require that you do noise removal, I mean, it's absolutely worth looking into. <laughs>